and you go crazy. With us, fresh out of the plane, fuck you. And I know you're a fan, but good guy. And we trying to sneak in Chicago and sneak out, and you causing a scene about to get us busted or possibly killed because you at work and want to say you, you a fan of me. I love you, but you see, we trying to sneak through this mother. Nigga talking about Charleston. Say, man, I love y'all. I ain't done nothing to you. Say, nigga, we trying to sneak through Chicago. God damn, nigga. So, yeah, shout out to Chicago. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. Say, Rat Williams, Charleston White didn't show up. Yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, Buddy Love and Professor Griff, I'm Buddy Love. Rat Williams done showed up. Charleston White is not here. He brought the police with him. If anybody bothered me, your ass going to jail. But you niggas don't give a damn about going to jail. They ain't got no bail system out here. You can get right out now. So fuck it, I'm trying to get out, get in here and get out. So let's hurry up. Hey. We ain't gonna waste no time. We got Rat Wheels. No, we got Mr. Charleston White in the building, man. We I guess y'all y'all won't y'all won't miss Mr. Charleston. Y'all get Mr. Charleston. I couldn't even, I couldn't even call him Rat Williams. I yeah. had to call him Mr. Charleston uh, White. Welcome but, to DJ UTV. I, I, I appreciate that, homie. But but all seriousness, uh, I, I I pay attention to people, and I listen very closely uh, to what people say. I noticed when we first got on the phone, you said Mr. Charleston. Uh, I wasn't going to take this interview. Uh, it was nothing that they could say to tell me to take this interview. There was no amount of money you could have paid. But when you said Mr. Charleston, uh, I let my guards down. Right. Uh, mo most, most people don't have that mannerism. Uh, most people that want to harm you, most people that have bad intentions, they don't know how to, they don't know how to play sheep to be a wolf. They show up as a wolf automatically. So when you said Mr. Charleston, and I was paying attention how you was interacting uh, with my manager, I said, yeah, I I'll take a chance with this. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Well, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you uh, having that faith and belief in me. You know, trust, you know what I mean? Uh, it wasn't you. I don't know you. Right. Uh, it's your spirit. Okay. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't camouflage your spirit that's a fact. to people who recognize spirits. Yeah, yeah, I walk in spirit. Uh, I, I play foolish, but yeah, you don't, you don't, uh, you can't say the things that I say uh, and travel around this country and not be walking in your spirit. Uh, something would have been happening. Yeah, uh, when me and 600 Breezy crossed paths, I done been in a lot of situations, homie, where I should have been got, I should have been had, uh, but because uh, I walk in spirit, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not nobody's prey. I'm not a victim. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in all sense, no matter what I say, there's no hate behind what I'm saying. Yeah. I ain't mad when I say such and such. I ain't mad at them people. Uh, I'm expressing something uh, with a purpose. So none, none of the things that I say is my personal feelings. Uh, they're beliefs. Uh, I don't share my feelings uh, with America. I share my beliefs, the things that I think uh, my opinions, uh, my ideology, and so people are affected by that. Uh, so there and their feelings, I'm in purpose. Uh, so, so in my mind, uh, I ain't doing nothing wrong. So let's start there. The day you and 600 Breezy, y'all link, was that in Atlanta? No, nah, that was in uh, Mississippi, in, in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, probably outside of New Orleans, one of the most dangerous places in the South. And right now they're suffering from a water crisis. Yeah. No one's talking about. Uh, their children suffer uh, from uh, illiteracy. Uh, they're probably one of the most impoverished uh, cities in the South. Uh, they still suffer from generational curses. Uh, racism is still prevalent. Uh, but niggas kill niggas. So those issues don't matter. When at the end of the day, when we go to sleep, niggas kill niggas. When we wake up and eat breakfast, niggas kill niggas. So all those other issues don't matter, homie. If, if, if me and my brother inside the house hitting each other in the head with a brick every day, what our neighbors doing don't mean shit. 
Me and my brother in the house jumping on each other. We jumping on our mama, we beating up our sister. What goes on outside of our house don't mean shit. And that's, that's, what's, that's what's happening with us. And you know, mama always said what goes on in this house stays in this house. She also said charity starts in the home. How you go fix your hood? How you go fix your community? You ain't even fixed the home yet. Nigga, you ain't even cleaned up the room. How you gonna go clean up everything outside in the community? Nigga, you ain't even cleaned up, you ain't even made your bed up this morning. So how you gonna fix anything? And you ain't even started in your home yet. So tell us about home. Let's take it back to where you were born. Fort Worth, Texas? Yeah. Agricultural state uh, before gangbanging showed up. Uh, yeah, before Crips and Bloods, homie. Uh, black people didn't kill black people. Uh, we did, but it was more, it was more intimate. Uh, nigga kill you for f***ing this bitch. Nigga kill you behind owing some money. Uh, nigga kill you behind a dice game. Uh, we never kill for nothing. Now we kill for nothing. A color, that's nothing. A street name, that's nothing. Nigga owe you some money, that's kind of something. Okay. It's not worth taking a life over, but uh, those are intimate crimes. Uh, now, nigga, we killing people we don't have nothing tied to. You don't even know the motherfuckers. You probably had a word with him into it on social media. Uh, he made a rap, I made a rap. There's no ties to what we're killing each other behind. Okay. Now, you say money. What makes money so special? Because you say out of all the other things, Money, we well, could probably bump it up some money. Well, well, well money's not special, but, but money is the tool to how, how I can feed my family. So if I pay you, if I owe, if I owe you some money, uh, to a lot of people, the money is their God. They don't play by my money. They, they might play by love. Uh, they may let you slide on disrespect. Many, some people don't play by their money. Uh, that's all they have. Uh, at least money can add a benefit to your life. Uh, nigga, the other shit don't add no benefit. A lot of niggas kill over women. So what's the difference between a woman and the money if a woman can provide benefits? Well, it's intimate, right? Nigga, it's my, right yeah, it's, it's intimate. intimate. The, the, the hood killing is not intimate. We, that's for nothing. 90% of the hood killing is probably over a woman, ain't it? No, no. It's, it's, it's because you from there, I'm from here. We at the club. Well, how'd it start? Uh, well, you, you said we at the club. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, well, this is why I say it's not over a woman. Our OGs probably got into it over a woman and created this hood beef. That was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I claim this hood. You claim this hood. We go to the football game. We go to the club, nigga, we ain't talking to It ain't a bitch nowhere around. I'm over here looking at y'all, y'all over there looking at us. Nigga ain't no over no world. We ain't dancing with no Say, nigga, can I cut in? No, fuck you. But, but, but we ain't fighting over no bitch. Okay. This shit is over. Nigga, you from over there, I'm from over here. Kill them. That's it. Say, there go them niggas. What? Over there! Get him! Say, you see them niggas looking at us? No, nah, nigga, these old looking too. This bitch looking at all of us. You see them big ass niggas over there looking at us? Nigga, we got four bitches looking over here. We gonna say, man, fuck them hoes. We getting at them niggas. Them niggas ain't done nothing to us. They just looking. And they from over there, we from over here, and they looking. They ain't got nothing to do with no bitch. This, it's over nothing. Because you from over there, and I'm from over here. Yeah. My partner killed your partner 10 years ago. Man, we, I wasn't even down with the set then. Over nothing. Uh, well, I know what it is. You uh, got the, a point there. The, the, the white is. people know what it is. It's not over nothing. It's, it's a bunch of boys uh, operating out of a, a, a place of displaced anger. These niggas mad at their mama, they mad at their daddy, they mad at their grandmama, they mad at their uncle who molested them. They ain't mad at me. 
They ain't mad at that nigga across the way. They mad at whoever caused that pain that they can't take it out on them. So when they come out their mama house, I ain't done a thing to them nigga. But because I'm from this side of town, and them niggas mad at the world, and I'm a reason that they can take their anger out on them, because they ain't going to take it out on the nigga who molested them. They ain't going to take it out on their daddy. They ain't going to jump on their mama. They ain't going to slap their grandmama. They go, so nigga, they gonna take it out on me. So I understand that from, you know, from a psychological standpoint of, of, of education, uh, a mental health standpoint. Uh, most black boys just mad, homie. Uh, they should be playing football. Uh, they should be boxing. Uh, they should be shooting pellet guns. They should be learning how to shoot uh, darts. But by the time, they get a gun, nigga, they just want to shoot somebody. They just want to hurt somebody. It don't matter who they hurt, nigga. They just want to hurt somebody. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with what I done said. They just want to hurt somebody, my nigga. I used to be like that. Nigga really want to hurt his mama. Go in the room. Cute. You really want to hurt your, your grandmama. Because she's favoring this cousin more than she's favoring you. He can go in the icebox and you can't. If y'all want a snack cake, you got to ask. Grandmama came in, tell Larry to get it. And Larry mistreating you. I was Larry. <laughs> I was Larry mistreating so I understand. So yeah, no, 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 I get it, my nigga. But who <laughs> talking man. about that? Yeah, yeah, who talking about that, huh? It's a man bunch of mistreated, <laughs> it's a bunch of mistreated uh, niggas walking around with that unresolved childhood trauma, kicking people's ass and shooting guns, and nigga, they just need a hug. Need somebody to kiss them on the forehead and say, baby, I love you. So when you hear about Chicago, you know, uh, like you said, a lot, of, a lot of the beef be about we from over here, they from over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And in Chicago, the, prox the proximity is like this close. That's why the killing is so uh, greater, because people kill in proximity. Uh, in the South, we kind of spread it out. We don't live on top of each other in the South. In California, them niggas bunched in. In, in, in New York, stacked on top of each other. Chicago, stacked on top of each other. Philly, stacked on top of each other. In the South, we kind of spread it out. So that's what, that's what make it look like it's more dangerous up here. Now it's just all y'all live in close proximity. And, and if you study crime and, and you know crime, people kill in that proximity. But we do it, uh, we do it a little different. Even Who though we? Uh, black people. Okay. Uh, white people live amongst each other, but they don't kill like how we kill each other. Right. Uh, Mexicans, they live amongst each other but they don't kill each other how we kill each other. Asians live amongst each other. They don't kill each other how we kill each other. Uh, lions live amongst each other. They don't kill each other how we kill each other. Roaches live amongst each other. <laughs> they don't kill each other how we kill each other. We are the only species in God creation. Think about this, homie. We are the only species that God have ever created that eat its own like this. No other thing, no other race, no other creature does this. White man ain't got nothing to do with this. So he, so uh, this can't be explained, homie. This new black motherfucker, his hurricane. This is a mutant. This some, this is a mother mutation. Tell us about your opinion when it comes to the city of Chicago, right? So yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, this is your first time in Chicago right now. And I ain't never coming back to this motherfucker. <laughs> it's my first and last motherfucking time. Until they bring the National Guards and the United States Marines and the Taliban here, I ain't coming back to this motherfucker. So I heard you made a song called Chicago Kids Are Doomed. Yeah. Until they mama and daddy move. Until, be, no, no. I said Chicago kids are doomed because the mamas and daddies won't move. Okay. Uh, maybe y'all haven't looked at the educational system, uh, but I took a peek at Chicago's educational system. Uh, 
the, the children don't fare too well here in education. On top of when they get out of school, uh, they're subjected uh, to violence. Uh, on top of that, uh, they listen to drill music. They don't listen to slow songs. Uh, uh, on top of that, they got a gang culture that will never let them live a normal life. Uh, they'll never know what it's like to be safe as long as they live in Chicago. Uh, I, I've never lived here. I, I, I've met people uh, from here. I've met good people. Well, I've never met nobody that I can say, man, them Chicago niggas fucked up. Uh, I'm looking at statistics. Uh, I'm looking at data, uh, factual information, uh, things that you can't deny. Uh, but when I walked into the studio, uh, I met a young brother that said he worked with kids. Uh, that he created a program that those kids, uh, some elementary school kids, uh, painted into that picture uh, that, a, that a teacher had drew. So, uh, what resources do they have to prove I'm wrong? I'm looking at statistics. Uh, statistics don't lie. How do you figure? Uh, I took a quantitative statistic class okay. in, in, at the university and college. They can predict shit. It's called a, it's called a, a bell curve. It's called a what? A bell curve. Okay. It's mathematical formulas, homie, based on, on, on things that happen. They can predict crime. They can look out in America. They can look out and say, homie, this over here, this gonna be a, they can predict crime. They've been predicting this. So when you have knowledge and you have the, the wisdom to go along with that knowledge, uh, you can see things that the average person with just information can't see. Most people just got information, they know, but they don't have the knowledge. Uh, black people don't have knowledge. They know a bunch of shit, mm -hmm. but they don't have knowledge. They have a bunch of information, but they don't have the wisdom to decipher their information. We think what's real is fake, and we think what's fake is real. We think what's true is false, and what's false is real. Uh, we think opinions are facts. And I'm telling people, if you look at the statistics, Chicago kids are doomed. Okay. You have to go look at the statistics. Go look and see which, can your third grader read around this motherfucker? Right. I know if third graders can read. Only 33% of children, 36% of children today, homie, can read on or above their grade level. That means, man, that means 70% of these motherfuckers are stupid. They can't read a contract. They can't read that motherfucking indictment. Knowingly, willingly, and intensely, they can't understand that shit. I'm, I feel like it'll be the same statistic in any urban city in America. It's the same. It's not, It ain't though. just Chicago. It, it, it's not. Uh, when you start looking at the cities, you have to start looking at the policies and the politics of those cities. So when you start doing that, you go start you go start seeing democratic cities, places where they have democratic mayors who vote, who have a democratic liberal mindset, states that have democratic governors. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's deeper. It's beyond than what we're trying to scratch. We just trying to scratch the surface. We're not going to the core of this shit, homie. Uh, if your government wanted to, they could stop this in Chicago. If your mayor, if if your city councilman, if your if your state legislation, if they wanted to, they could they could stop this shit. Easy they wanted to. If you know the history of this 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 this, this state, uh, corruption have always played a part uh, in its politics, way back to Al Capone. 
So why not move? Why not give your children a chance? If you know this educational system is failing at, at this degree, why not give your kids a chance? What you stand here for? What you stand here for? And it's something better in America. Now you're definitely known for um, a lot of controversial comments, um, specifically about Chicago in regards to King Von. Um, a lot of up King Von, um, a lot of death on the GDs, BDs, Crips and Bloods, uh, and uh, anybody who killed niggas. Yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, tell us the logic behind that type of speech. Uh, I'm against anything that's against black people. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's been documented and reported uh, that King Vaughn have killed at least three or four people. Uh, even Chicago Police Department have came out and, 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 and adamantly said that he's been involved uh, in the cause of murders. Uh, I knew nothing uh, of King Vaughn up until he died. Knew nothing about him. Couldn't tell you no. I can't repeat one song of a Chicago rapper other than Twister uh, and Do or Die. Uh, and Kanye West. So when I start learning about him, uh, he had just gotten out of jail uh, once I'd done my research. He was already a big rapper. But he, he was released from jail on, on some murders. Not that he didn't do it, but because the victims came up dead. Now hold on, let's stop right there. Where you hear that at? Uh, I read it. I'd done my research. Read it well. Uh, and, and, and all the paperwork that's on it, uh, whether that's true or not. No, I'm just saying, is that something you found on YouTube? Or? No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't go to YouTube for information. Okay. Uh, I go to databases. Okay. Uh, when you have the knowledge that I have, homie, I was a pre-law student at Texas Western University, so I know how to go to the to the public library or any university's library and tap into databases and, and pull up information and, and read articles and, and, and written real written credible sources. Right. So so when you go to college and you have to write a paper, you can't write I got this from YouTube. They're gonna fail you. Okay. You can't put Google as your source of information. Okay. You have to put a credible source of information. Mm -hmm. So I went and read credible sources of information. Okay. Uh, uh, and and uh, it, it says that that, okay. that that the witnesses, you know, okay. came up dead in the case. And the reason I have to challenge that is because, you know, uh, with me being in the media field and you being in the media field yourself, you know, a lot of shit in the headlines be fake, right? Charles and White shoots himself in the leg in the club. We know that's fake. Uh, you 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 miss Charles what I'm saying. You, 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 uh, boy. Uh, you, you miss what I'm saying. That's not the media field. I'm not in the media field. I don't have a media press pass. I'm a YouTuber with content. YouTubers aren't the media field. I get no information from YouTube. I get no information from Google. I'm going to go to a library database that's going to give me access to police records, mm -hmm. news articles, because if the news reports something wrong, they can be you sued. You know the news is fake. L listen to me. If the news reports something wrong, they can be sued. That's why they have a correction section where if they say something wrong, they say, hey, we got to correct this because they can be sued. YouTubers can't be sued for saying something wrong. YouTube don't have a media press pass where if the president now, comes... Now, hold on. Now, 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 let's talk. I don't mean to cut you off, but I do want to talk about fake news just right now because you're a Donald Trump supporter, correct? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a conservative voter uh, who just so happened to vote for Donald Trump because he pushed a conservative platform. But and, now, you know, he also pushed a fake news agenda with Fox, correct? Uh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know that to be true. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I... I, I and I come to challenge you today because I, I, I watch a lot of your well, interviews. Well, you, you, you know you, what I'm saying? You, listen, you, you missing what and I'm you, saying. No, I ain't missing. I'm, listen, I'm hold, right on, here, hold, on, hold on, hold on. If you hear I me want out, you to be right here where but, I'm at too, but, though. But I'm way past you, brother, because you stuck on the news. I'm telling you, I done went to the but library. But you're talking about credible sources. But, but listen to me. You, you said saying, news articles. But, That's but where listen, I'm at. Listen, listen. You saying news 
News and news articles are totally different. You got different, the articles bro. from the news. No, you sir, ain't talking to no fool. What's the, up, Mr. Charles? Uh, let, let me explain something to you, brother. You don't see news editors on television. The people who write the news aren't newscasters. You totally confused. The newscasters bro. reporting what they got from the news uh, editors. That, that's, that's not true at all, brother. What you mean? Uh, that's not true. The, the, the things that's reported on the news are not equally to the things that's written in papers. That's why you got Bill O'Reilly who goes on television and speak, and you got Barbara Sanders who write and you'll never see his face. They don't say the same things. Because one is pushing a narrative. One has to really write. That's why all news journalists who write have to have a source. That's why when the government say, hey, give me your source. Hey, man, my freedom of press. I don't have to tell you who told me this information. The news guy on television, he can tell you whatever because those are two different entities. And that's what we need to know as black people in America. The guy that's on the television, he's full of shit. The guy that's writing, that's why they're trying to take the writers out. So if you ever want to hide something from a nigga, put it, put in, it in a book. That's why you watch the news and you don't read the newspaper. We got anymore. books over here. Brother, 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 let's stick to what me and you talking about. That's why you watch the news and don't read the newspaper. And I'm telling you, for the news brother, paper. brother, that's why I'm telling you, I don't it's, watch it's, the news. I different. go to the library. There's nothing in the library that's false. If you go watch oh, the no, book no, no, of no, no, Eli, no, no, no. that's why they are not giving children books anymore. That's why you don't read a book. That's why they don't read now, books. Because you are giving information from the news guy. That's right. why you are telling me what a man says, and I'm telling you what was written. Now, you just said there's nothing we read in the library that's false. That man, you that man, you believe in anything the white man put in them textbooks and told us to read, correct? Uh, when the last time you read a book out the library that a right white man written? Are you telling me your school books? That's not from the library, brother. Your school books that they give no, you. No, no, from no, no. The you get what I'm saying? Don't, listen, don't, don't, hey, don't listen, twist I'm, it. I'm you gonna get tell, what I'm, I'm saying. Gonna, I'm gonna tell I you. I said that man, you believe in whatever the white man wrote in them books that made us read in them libraries. Uh, I don't, I don't believe the white man. If you wrote, said whatever in the library, not false. You said whatever we read in the library is not false. The more so that means you believe in whatever them white men wrote in them books and made us read out them libraries, whether it's the school library, public library, you get what I'm saying, Mr. Charles the White. What's up? There are more black people who are written books than white people, my brother. Okay. Well, tell and me I, something. And, and I believe everything that's written in the book because they have nonfiction, they have sci-fi, okay. they have all these accuracies in books. That's why they have different genres, young brother. Okay. There's more Latin people who have written than white people. Okay. Most of your history be, will be wrote in a book. Black, white, African, Arab, or whatever. Your history will be accounted for in a book. It won't be posted. It won't be in the news media. It's going to be wrote in a book. That's why none of you are in the library reading and picking books. That's why right now today, when the last time, ain't no when last time you been to the library and got one of them white man books. <laughs> we got them over here. No, nah, don't tell me what you got over there that y'all read in prison. First, for they laws of power, that book has no power. Every nigga I know reading that book broken, don't control nothing, don't own nothing, with a convicted background. So don't tell me about the books up that the streets read. That's a bullshit book. The 48 Laws of Power. <coughs> tell me about some mess you don't win and got out the library, homie. Your history. Your history. What do you know about a griot since you like watching the news? If you go to that white man's library to tell you that Africans didn't write books. Africans was oral historians called griots. They told a history in family reunions once they sit amongst each other. So where are you getting your history from since you so judgmental of the white man books? All y'all went to that white man's school system to learn your history. The white school teacher taught you how to read. Your mothers and fathers didn't. And they so didn't teach us our history though. Where you learn your history from then? Who, who English did you read? What, what, what language did you read your history in? We learned our shit in the movies. What, 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 his, what language did you learn your history in? We learned our shit in the music. What language did this, you learn this, your this, history this in? This the language that we learned in. No, 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 no. He keeps speaking. What, what, do they rap in English, Spanish? Oh, okay, yeah, English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, when you watch your movies, what language did they right, speak? Right, English, right. That white man's language, right? Right. So you learned your language from the white man. 
You spoke his language. How do you know it's correct? You spoke his language. You didn't speak it in your language. You didn't speak it in your language. You spoke it in his language. So what's your problem with his history and you talking his language? You eat his food, you eat beef, don't you? Don't eat pork. Do you like beef? Yeah. Pork is not the white man's diet. Pork is not the white man's diet. Beef is. Our digestive system is not even meant to digest beef. Our teeth are not even meant to chew meat. So what you telling me about pork for and you eat beef? One of the worst product, it's a dead carcass. And it takes three days to rot in your belly before your body can digest it. So what's your problem with pork? And most of the cancers come from beef. His red meat. He liked to drink blood. He liked to taste. So why are you eating beef, brother? That's his diet. We so miseducated, homie, we don't know nothing. We just divided by our bullshit belief system. So we think we know, but we don't know because we speak English. We all speak English, his language. He's the Englishman. He come from the queen, not us. We speak his language. You want to teach me in his language, and you want to tell me I'm wrong in his language. <laughs> <laughs> we're all wrong, brother. <laughs> yeah, y'all fucking with me, man. We're all wrong. Hey, hold on. <laughs> it's Dewberry with his shoes on. His <laughs> yeah, yeah, that nigga on. laid on him. <laughs> <laughs> Say, country nigga. Yeah, country nigga in Chicago. <laughs> 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 yeah, he gonna start tapping his toes together. That was funny. So look, behind you, it's a portrait of Tupac. Yeah. And uh, you gave me chills when you gave me the, the story behind it. For sure. And you know, the story behind myself with being King Von's former DJ, I made a, uh, I made a Tupac versus King Von comparison on my YouTube channel um, probably like a couple weeks ago, you know? And it caused a real big uproar. You know what I'm saying? Um, I might as well read it right. That what it was. So what I wrote was, this is three weeks ago. I said, when it comes to gangster rap, I feel like King Von is the type that Tupac wanted to be. All that gangster stuff Pac used to talk about, he was never doing it. And Von had done it all. He got over 1,500 likes, 1,800 comments. They was going crazy. Uh, the, a, a, as you were saying that question. And Meaning, I was, what would have been your comment had you read, when it comes to gangster rap, I feel like King Von is the type that Tupac wanted to be? Uh, uh, me, 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 me and you bear the same spirit. Uh, we operate out of the same purpose. Those are my exact words. As you were saying that, in my mind, I was saying, shit, man. Nigga Vaughn was everything Pac wanted to be. As a matter of fact, nigga Vaughn is everything every rapper is trying to be and professing to be, but they ain't. Okay, I'm glad you said that. So that's why I'm trying to put the fire out on this nigga. And, and it all because, makes because think about this, homie. If Tupac impacted me to be where I am and saying what I'm doing and doing what I'm doing on a revolutionary tip, Imagine what the fuck King Von goes for. He wasn't on no revolutionary shit. He was on some demon shit. We got to put that fire out. Nigga, two more King Von go destroy the world. Nigga, Pac, I'm the baby of Pac, nigga. Never even getting goals accomplished. I, I had something to grab hold to, homie. They don't. Vaughn ain't even leave them niggas a dear mama song. You said he knew why? I'm sorry. What you mean? He got a dear mama song? Oh, you said dear mama song. Do we got a dear mama? Yeah, he <laughs> didn't even leave the babies a dear mama song, nigga. Killing and dying is what he left them, nigga. And he died before the world. So I'm saying, okay, do we want that image to be the seed sown into our babies and our youth? Or do we want 
Mr. Bennett, whatever his name is. Niggas, give us a documentary on how he grew up. Could he read? Could he write? What's his relationship like with his sister? Was he sweet with girls? Uh, could the, yeah, the homie, god damn, all we know the nigga foreign is killing. Mm. So who is obligated to tell us more about this guy? Was he a real demon? He wanna nigga, real because demon. I want to know when did black people start worshiping demons? When did black people start not having a problem with a demon? So if this nigga profess I'm a demon and he got demon ways and demon actions and you can't separate that from who he really is, then man, we don't need none of this to our babies. Well, I feel like the word uh, demon is uh, figurative language. Right? Words are powerful. You know words are powerful. So you it's not speak figurative. a lot of powerful so, words. So, so it's not figurative. And I'm not speaking figuratively, homie. I'm speaking uh, with on, purpose hold on, hold on, and hold on, intent. Hold on, hold on. Now, I don't want to jump out of interview. We're just going to get to the character later, but... If, if, if I say words are figurative, then you would know it with playing a character, right? My words mean, my words have a purpose and they're not figured. I mean every goddamn thing I'm saying. I'm just in character saying them. Okay. When I say King Vaughn, I mean that nigga. Okay. When I say Raymond Washington, I mean That's that. That's what your character means. But I mean it though, as a man, in character. Okay. In character, I mean okay. that. So if we're supposed to accept your character, then we're supposed to accept his character my, too, I, I, huh? I, I'm not trying to get my, I don't want my character to be, be accepted. accepted. That's, okay, that's I want my point. character to be heard. Okay. I want to be heard, and I want my character to be effective. My character is heard, and my character is effective. Okay. That's all I want. Okay. So tell us about that concept when you uh, dissing these type of, Rappers, knowing that these guys mean so much to a whole lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And knowing so that the people they killed mean a whole lot to a lot of people. That's a fact. So that's all I care about. I'm on the victim side. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not on the fan side. Okay. I cry with the mothers. I cry with the victims. I'm on the victim side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, the people who accept them are, are, is dumb children. Okay. Who are, who, who are mostly in pain who have been abused, who've been molested, who come from drug infested homes, who come from impoverished communities, they don't know goodness. They don't know goodness, so misery love company. So this is a bunch of people who keep each other company in the name of rap music. But they don't love each other because it ain't no love in rap. Go to a rap concert, you don't see nobody loving each other. Go to the hood, you don't see nobody loving each other. It's a bunch of miserable motherfucking people all listening to the same misery. Causing misery. Listening to misery causing misery. Who gives a fuck about what they feel? And they wake up to hurt people every day. They call a black woman a bitch in a minute. I say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I hold a dough for the sisters. I don't shoot gun at black people. I don't break into black folks' house. I go against everything that go against us. A rapper, a street nigga, and a gang member. Whoever hurt in the black community, that's what I go against. Who got a problem with that? I pick up trash in the neighborhood, homie. <laughs> I pick up trash. Yeah, I pick up trash in the neighborhood. Nigga, I have a stop six cleanup day, nigga, where I give out money to the kid who got the biggest bag of trash, pick up the most trash in the neighborhood. Who else do that? Tell us about the, uh the, 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 the campaign with the mothers, right? Yeah. Um, you had Tuka Mom, mm -hmm. uh, Mama Duck. Uh-huh. You had Lil Snoop Mom. Uh-huh. Uh, L.A. Capone Mom? Uh, nah. Uh, nah, no. I, I met her one time. Okay. And, and, I, and I said something about another kid, and she said, oh, that's the op. And I said, man, I don't want nothing to do with that lady. Hmm. She identified another kid as an op, and her son was, I said, man, I don't want nothing to do with that lady. Mm. We had Mo3 mother. Oh yeah, Mo3, uh, I'm and, sorry. And then, and then we had, F, uh, we had uh, Dobie's mother, but we didn't, we didn't get a chance to fly her in. Okay. Uh, and then we got uh, a youngin, what's the kid, youngin Ace, or J.D. Youngin? J.D. Youngin's mom, we got J.D. Youngin's mom now. Okay. Uh, God put in my spirit, homie, that uh, one of the most powerful voices in the black community is the black mother. Uh, when you go to the prison, a uh, visitation room, when you go to the jail houses, you go to the juvenile facilities, uh, when you go to the funeral homes, uh, when you go to court, 
you don't see the, the homies nowhere in the vicinity. It's all mothers and grandmothers. Uh, niggas play like they love King Von. Niggas play like they hurt behind King Von, but ain't nobody more hurt than these mothers. Uh, don't nobody show up for these mothers when these mothers uh, are six months uh, into grieving after their children gone and, and the smoke done cleared and the lights done cut off and the cameras aren't coming around. Uh, the hood ain't for these mamas. So I, 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 God put in my spirit to, to come up with a, a, a better way to try to reach the youth. This ain't about the internet. This ain't about the streets because I didn't take this, this to the internet. Uh, I went to the, to the community. Uh, and I wanted to, to reconstruct a murder trial uh, in, in the form of a stop the violence uh, rally. So I, I gathered all the mothers who, who have buried their sons, uh, who was famous rappers. And then I went and got men who committed murder when they was young niggas. And then I went and got a judge. And then I, I, I contacted the, uh, the, the, the district attorney's office. And, and they agreed to be a part of this, this panel presentation. And so we did a, a three hour presentation talking about murder, how murder changes a person. Uh, but from the victim standpoint, which is the parent to bury their children, from the killer standpoint, who done spent 20 years, 25 years uh, in prison from killing. Yeah, let's talk to them killers. And let's not talk to the nigga who ain't killed shit, how they about he a killer. Let's go talk to the killers that done done that time. We don't want to talk to the killer who done killed and got away. Let's talk to the killer who done paid that debt and see if he's still talking that killer talk. So that's what I went and did, homie. Uh, and uh, right now we're in talks with Netflix uh, and, and a whole lot of people uh, to have it released. So. Okay. Now, so we getting ready to do another one in, uh, in North Carolina uh, with a congressional woman. Uh, we're doing one in Mississippi, so we, we, we try to take this around, and I'm not using this uh, for the internet. So this is off the internet. Okay. Now, I know you uh, share empathy for Tuka's mom, but from my research and recent interviews of yourselves, you don't share too much empathy for King Von's mom. Can nah. you tell us why? Uh, she knew her son was a killer. Uh, my mother had two sons who committed murder. And we wasn't raised to kill people. My brother serving a 114 year sentence for, a for a murder he committed at the age of 17. I got locked up for a murder at the age of 14. So my I'm mom, sorry, I'm gonna cut you off right there, but how many years your brother 100, serving? 114. <coughs> okay. For killing a nigga when he was 17 years old. He killed him execution style. He didn't do no drive-by shooting. He pulled up on the nigga, made the nigga lay down on the ground, talked to the nigga before he killed him, and shot him in the back of the head. And not one time in 30 years, nigga, have he complained about being in prison. Not one time have my mother complained about him being gone 30 years since he was a kid. My mother always reminded us, homie, that we killed somebody. So, nigga, she always said, if nothing else, baby, I still get to come see y'all. That woman and that other woman can't get to go see they baby. So don't y'all ever forget that. My mother had remorse for the people we killed, homie. My mother publicly spoke out and said, I don't condone this. My mother taught us that silence is a form of agreement. My mother took the stand one time and, and the, the DA said, is your son in the game? My mama said, yeah. God damn, mama, I just lied on the stand and said I'm not in the game. My mother is a righteous woman. She ain't gonna lie. One time the police came to the house with a warrant looking for me. It's Charles to hear. My mama didn't say, no, let me see. She didn't lie. It's a difference. I know good women, good mothers. Good mothers don't condone wrong. My mother say wrong is wrong and right is right. No matter who wrong, son, you wrong. You go turn yourself in. You go turn yourself in, boy. And that boy got 114 euro, but she got him the best lawyer. She down there twice a month to go see him. In 30 years, that nigga ain't never not had a visit twice a month, in 30 years. And he coming home. So I say, why would I have sympathy for a woman who been silent for her murderous son, 
who ain't got no empathy for them victims. Right is right and wrong is wrong, black people. We got to get back to that, my nigga. No matter how we feel about who wrong, mama wrong, mama wrong. Whoever wrong, wrong, my nigga. That's all I'm saying. Now, another big name, obviously, in the Kayvon situation is Quando Rondo. He most recently dropped his flag, right? Yeah. Um, you being a former member of the Rolling Sixties Crip, that was the time in which you had to drop your flag, correct? No, I didn't have to. Uh, I chose to. Okay. Because I was growing up, it was called uh, brain development. I joined the gang when I was 15 years old in a boy's home, missing my mama. Just want to be a part of something. And really just want to be delinquent. We didn't kill each other. We never even got to fight for 10 minutes. Most of us became friends when we ended up on the dorms and in groups with each other. So when I started getting 18, 19, 20, I'm starting to say, man, this shit ain't what I'm gonna do this shit for? So by the time I'm 21, gang banging don't appeal to me. It don't appeal to me. Niggas getting money in the streets. It's 21 year old nigga with hundred thousands of dollars. Nigga driving Mercedes Benzes. What the fuck I want to gang bang for? Master P just dropped a goddamn album talking about me, 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 me crack like this. Ghetto dope. Talk, talk to nigga how to cook crack. Fuck I want to gang bang for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't have to drop my flag, nigga. Times had changed. In 1998, niggas wasn't gangbanging like 1991. I changed with the times. That gangbanging shit. And by the way, I done rode around my city for a whole month. I can't find no road in 60th Street. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Nigga, I can't find no road in 60th Street. So what I'm going to claim this shit for? And I'm gonna go kill a nigga I grew up with in the projects from. He from Stop Six. Nigga, I'm from Stop Six too. What I'm gonna kill a nigga and I'm claiming rolling 60th Street? I'm from Stop Six. They just happen to be bloods. Man, f that gang bag and shit. So I don't blame Quando Rondo. We ain't from there, nigga. Cripping blood don't exist down here. What we gonna be that for? Gangster disciples ain't down where I'm from, homie. So what we gonna be that for? Nigga, we don't even know folks. What we gonna be that for? So what does that mean to drop out of a game? Does that mean we ain't never been in? We ain't never been in, homie. This is just a, this is just like skinny jeans. For in the South, Crippin' Blood for Quando Rondo is just like skinny jeans. They too tight. Man, I don't want to wear them no more. <laughs> this ain't nothing we die by. Nigga ain't dying for skinny jeans. <laughs> That's all this shit is. They too tight, man. My nuts. I need some poop to scratch my nuts. That's all that is. <laughs> Gang banging is not like that for us down south like it is for California and Chicago. We ain't that loyal to that shit. Even the niggas that's OGs grow out of it. Ain't no 50-year-old Larry Hoover's in our cities, huh? Ain't no Jeff Forts in our towns. That don't exist down south. That's only up here. So that shit y'all talk, our kids just playing. In five years, they gonna be fucking. They ain't gonna be killing each other. They gonna be with homosexual shit. This drill shit for the play out. These niggas finna be fucking each other some. <laughs> yeah, two homeboys finna be in the trap running trains on each other. They ain't finna be doing drive by no more. This shit finna play out. Hey, so you don't with Adam for real? Adam 22? Yeah. Nah, I'm gonna fucking what? That's it. <laughs> she, he let everybody else fuck. Let me fuck. Him. Yeah, he won't just. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. In, 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 in home and they, uh, he really, he really like the, like the, like the, the black exploitation. He a culture vulture. He the new, it ain't Vlad. Nah, nigga, Vlad documenting real accurate black history. Right. Adam 22 is the vulture. Okay. Nah, homie, uh, Vlad, uh, all them old ass comedians during the pandemic, Vlad was paying them, homie, because they wasn't getting booked. Uh, Mob James. That nigga, that nigga grandbaby went to CPS. That nigga Vlad helped that nigga get his baby out of CPS. Mm. Uh, he gave me the game on YouTube, homie, when they deleted my channel. He told me they would go delete it. Right. Nah, homie, he, uh, you gotta understand, he came up with niggas. He the white boy that came up with us, they got a heart for us. Right. Uh, he can't get in the white boy industry because he been trying to play nigga. True. So he gotta come over here and eat with us. 
He done lost his inheritance over there. We bashing him. But nigga, where we getting our history from? Where we gonna learn about what really happened to Tupac and all this if Vlad don't do this? I ain't gonna act like Vlad ain't the godfather. Shit, come on, homie. And who else? Everybody else following his blueprint and model to maximize the dollar. He grew with YouTube. When he gave me that game, nigga, he started with YouTube. He, YouTube, nigga, he can get anybody shut down. He <laughs> told me they were gonna shut me down, nigga. I just grabbed my dick, my motherfucker. I just thought I was a bad motherfucker. Nigga, they took that $16,000 a month. Nigga, I'm making $16,000 a month, huh? He told me they were gonna take it. Right. And he told, any, any give me, nigga, no other black person gave me the game, huh? I didn't learn this shit from white folk. Mm -hmm. How to trade, nah, nigga, ain't no nigga give me the game. All these Hassan, nah, I remember they ain't giving me no game. Vlad whisper in my ear, say cheese TV. But ain't no niggas getting a nigga. Niggas want to use a nigga. This industry fucked up, homie. And it's fucked up toward the mamas when these niggas die. Only reason King Von mama right, homie, is because Empire Records is right, Ghazi. Nigga got, that nigga mama just got a $15 million check, nigga. Mo3 mama just got another $10 million. Now, Empire Records take good care of their artists. They give, they give them niggas enough money on the front end, homie, where they can go buy their jewelry and, and stun in front, but them niggas own all their masters on the back end. Don't know other record label do that. Yeah, now nah, King Vaughn family set forever, homie. Dirk and them didn't do that. Empire Records done that. So, you, you was right what you said earlier, homie. It's not that we're misinformed, we're miseducated. Because we live in an information age, nigga, we can find out anything now. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing that can be hidden from us now, homie. Mm -hmm. Nigga, we can fix Chris, nothing, ain't nothing can be hidden now. It's just that we don't have the desire to know, to learn. We stuck on the bullshit. Uh, so that's why I come to the internet with the bullshit. Why I wanna come teach. Can you tell us your perspective as a Texas native when it comes to Chicago? Like, when you hear about Chicago, what's your perception? This is your first time here. Emmett Till. Okay. Yeah, when I, when I think of Chicago, I think of Emmett Till. I think of Larry Hoover. Uh, I think of Latin Kings. Uh, I took a, I took a, a domestic gangs course in an in a international gangs course uh, at, the at Texas Western University. Uh, so we had to we had to read the book about how the Latin Kings uh, originated and write a paper on it. Uh, I learned about Larry Hoover as a kid. Uh, I learned about the Folk Nation, uh, the Six Point Star, uh, and, and I've always admired uh, the principles and the concepts of, of growth and development. Okay. Uh, I always thought they was different co compared to the to the Crips and Bloods. But what about today's Chicago, right? Uh, Real I'm, music. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take you there. Okay. Uh, for a while, uh, people would say this. He don't never say nothing about Chicago. He always talking about the Crips and the Bloods. And, and they were right. Uh, I would never speak on Chicago because I always thought that Chicago had literature uh, and knowledge that they had to guide young black people from, you know, out, out of the streets that if they possess this literature, uh, the growth and development that they could advance through stages in life based on uh, maturity and, and well, growth and development. So that's brain development, right? That's brain, that's, that's understanding brain development. Right. Uh, so that was my belief. So then I grew up and, and, and you hear about the Tuca, but I never knew what Tuca was. Uh, I never knew about the Chief Keith. I never knew about the Jojo Capone. You heard it, but you never knew. Lil Jojo, not Jojo Capone. Yeah, well, yeah, Lil Jojo. Uh, so you, you hear about it, but you never know. When you become of knowing, you be saying, what the f All these were babies. Nigga, these were babies. Right. And this just didn't happen overnight. Uh, this grew and evolved over time before the eyes of the world. Where were the adults when this shit was forming? What was black people doing, homie? When these kids out here was dying like this. Uh, 
So then you start learning about this shit and, and uh, as a grown person, as a father, uh, now as a community leader, uh, nigga, you become sick to your stomach. Uh, you start losing hope in your race. Uh, from a spiritual standpoint, uh, a, 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 a spiritual hip hop cultural standpoint, when it was on the East, uh, the, you know, them nigga was, you know, they were rapping about what they were rapping about. It wasn't dangerous. It was awareness. Right. It came over to the West. Uh, NWA. I can't say it, it wasn't dangerous. Uh, <laughs> That's who started Gangsta Rap, right? NWA? Yeah. I, 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 wasn't, I, I wasn't gonna say it wasn't dangerous, but the, the awareness became a danger, what they was rapping about. Uh, for instance, uh, when I was a kid and I first heard of a strawberry, uh, nigga, I ain't know what strawberry was. Strawberry, strawberry, she's a neighborhood hoe. I ain't know what that was. As I got older, I began to understand what a strawberry was because the seed was sown into my little young mind. Uh, when I heard Two Loud Crew, hey, we want some mm -hmm. I was about 10, 11 years old. Me and my homies like to play this game. Some call it Amtrak, but some call it the train. Uh, as little boys, uh, we started trying to train girls, not have sex with girls. That was a difference. Growing up, we didn't try to have sex with girls. We tried to train girls. So, the, from a spiritual standpoint, you had hip hop, then you had gangster rap, right? Uh, then you had trap music, you mm -hmm. got hustler music. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say you had drive by music. So, drive by music? Yeah, man, there's some drive by music they had during the 90s that nigga put on and go shoot up a nigga mama house. Uh, but so we can say like the most impactful has been drill music. You know nah, gangster rap. Within the last 10 years. Let's just talk about the last 10 years, uh, right? Uh, gangster rap is the umbrella. Drill music just falls up under the umbrella of gangster rap. Okay. Uh, trap music has been the most influential. Drill music come from trap music. Uh, nah, Are you aware of like the trap music? I mean the nah, drill nah, music nah, nah, in nah. the UK? No, uh, uh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Drill music don't come from trap music. Trap music is about trapping. Drill music just is about killing. Trapping and killing don't go together. That's like oil and water. Because once you start killing, you can't trap. Can't make no money trapping. Drill music is one of the trap music kids. Nah, homie. Uh, so, dr dr drill music. Gucci Mane, Waka Flocka Flame, Brisk Wild they, Monopoly, they, they, they Frenchie. Was, uh, that, that wasn't that's, trap music. That's a drill. Uh, that wasn't trap music. That was trap music. No, 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 no. Trap music is hustling, homie. Trap. talking about like Jeezy and shit. But, 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 but Jeezy wasn't by killing. This, you got to understand, homie. Drill music is strictly by killing. That's a, that's something new. That ain't got nothing to do with dope selling. That ain't got nothing to do with robbing. This nigga all about killing. That's a baby, that's a, that's a mutant. That ain't the baby of trap music. These niggas ain't even talking about getting money no more. Nigga, we come up with talking about getting money. Nigga, drilling ain't got nothing to do with money. It's all about killing. For nothing. Not killing for no bad. This is something different, homie, in hip hop. This is something different. Because it was all babies. These are babies with guns. Trapping is young niggas trying to get out the ghetto, out the hood, nigga. These are babies with guns. Drilling. Chief. Lil Joe, these are babies with guns. They'll shoot anybody. They don't give a damn about trapping. They didn't grow up listening to Gucci. 
Because if they was, they'll evolve as he evolved. Like all the all the Jeezy listeners done evolve with Jeezy. Niggas evolve with their rappers. If you I, I tell parents and, and school teachers all the time, man, if you want to get to know a kid, find out who his favorite rapper is. I say that a lot too. If you want to know your kid's mind state, if you want to know what kind of nigga your kid is, listen to his rapper. That motherfucking rapper lets you know what your baby want to do and what they're about to do. I Just listen that. to their favorite rapper. Study their lyrics to their favorite rapper, and you and your baby down there can become friends. Best friend. I think it's another one of those instances in which, um, you know, we obviously blame the rapper, but we ignore who's behind the rapper. And Nobody. It's the white man. No, you're goddamn lie. No, it's the white man. No, 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 no. Listen, when you show up to my record label with your killing nigga music, I ain't behind what you wrote. The white man is for sure. You wrote him before you got here. And you just gave a million for it. But but you wrote it. But, you but, but listen, I'm a listen, listen, brother, brother. I'm a businessman. Right. I ain't got nothing to do with what what you wrote. You wrote the lyrics talking about killing your neighbor. But you didn't tell me, no, this isn't what listen, you're supposed brother, to be I'm a, writing. Listen, you brother, said, brother, I'm going to give you a million dollars brother, 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 but listen. So you encouraged it. No, I didn't. With you, the utmost dollar amount. No, 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 I didn't. I'm a businessman, and I'm about business. Because when you stop rapping this, and I get a Nas X, and he can rap gay, I'm going to sign him, too. <laughs> you showed up with these gay killer lyrics, brother. I ain't got nothing to do with what's in your mind and what you want to project. I just know your destruction makes money. <laughs> you came to provide y'all destruction, and it's going to benefit me and my family. Why would I turn you down? Do you turn down the pregnant drug addict who's trying to buy crack from you, brother? Mm. What about the girl who may look underage and selling Do you turn her down? What about your homeboy's woman who's in a compromised state and you can fuck her and she come to you? So you turn her down. So you want me to turn you down and I can make trillions off your ignorance. The schools don't turn you away when your mother comes sign you up and register you. So why do you want me to turn you away? You want to be famous. You want to be a rapper. And the only way you can do this is if you come to me. You're not bringing me nothing positive that I can promote to Disney. I can make you richer than you can ever be if you wrote me some Disney lyrics. Hey, if you just want to be like Nick Cannon, I can make you a star forever. But you want to be a star just for a small time, so you write gangster lyrics because you don't want to live long. You don't want to be like Nick Cannon. So you don't, you're not a Nick Cannon kind of guy, so you show up this gangster, you and all your gangster buddies from your hood, and you're blaming me because your mind wrote these lyrics. All of that hate that you're professing, I didn't whisper that in your ear. I didn't pick your mother and your father when they made it and your dad left your mom, you know, to go f the chick. I didn't have nothing to do with that guy. Why are you blaming me as a white man? I never molested you. I didn't kick in your door and rob you and tie you up. I didn't kill your father. Why are you blaming me, the white man? I got a record label, brother. We just want to sell records to your people. And if we don't have these records to sell to your people, how will your people make music? <laughs> your people don't have record labels. How will they make music if it wasn't for us? No. So you want to blame me? I'm getting you out of the ghetto. Now that you're out of the ghetto, you're still writing these lyrics. That's, that's called manipulation. That's what that is. Now that you're out of the ghetto. That's manipulation at its finest. Brother, now that you're out of the ghetto, you got a hundred million dollars. Why are you still trying to sign? He with ain't me? got a hundred million, you got a hundred thousand. Why don't you it take I started my right? I started my record. Right? I started my record hey, label. Right? You're right. But I started my record label with twenty thousand. Why can't you start yours? You got a hundred thousand dollars with one million followers, sir. Wow. L hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, listen. Why can't you start your record label with yours when they started Black Wall Street with less than $100,000? Mm -mm. And you have more resources now. Mm -mm. It ain't that easy, right? It is that easy. It ain't that easy. Charleston you... White done touched a million dollars talking on the internet without a record label. How can you do that? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you Charleston why. Charleston White don't have why. a machine. I'm going to tell you why. And he, he's, he's shadow banned. I'm tell he's you not why. signed to nobody. And his people hate him. He don't sell records. How can he do that? I can tell you why. How? I can tell you why. How? 
it's the miseducation, like we stated earlier in our interview, okay? So if these young guys not knowing that, right, these young niggas, they outside, they hustling, they trying to do whatever it is they can do to get back. You feel who, me? Hold, so, hold on. So who miseducated you? Who miseducated who? Yeah. Who, who, who miseducated these The guys? artists? Yeah, the young guy that's trying to come up and become yeah, an artist? Yeah, who miseducated Who miseducated him? Yeah. The public school system that they grew up in. Well, why didn't their parents educate him? The parents were The parents were miseducated. Well, okay. Well, how is the parents getting miseducated? And you guys are I mean, let's not let's not act like parents, the title parents supposed to mean know it all. My you know mama, listen, up, listen, a bro. lot of these parents were 14, 15, 16 my, my years mama, old. My mama had, my brother at 15 had me at 17. Exactly, my mama so did, you know. My mama didn't graduate from high school, but she was okay. one of the most educated women I know. That's why I'm educated. Okay. I had a private tutor, even though my mama was uneducated. Okay. Our ancestors couldn't read or write. They was very uneducated. They was miseducated. Our ancestors, how did they do better than us? My mama don't have a high school diploma. How can that woman raise me to be so smart and educated and she was uneducated? Yeah. How? She made sure I read books. Boy, when I come home from work, y'all better have that homework laid out. And if I get her at home tonight at 3 in the morning, you ain't got that homework laid out, you ain't been took a bath, because I'm going to go in there and check that soap. And if that soap ain't wet, I'm waking y'all ass up. You go do that homework and you go bathe. That woman made sure we went to school and paid attention. She made sure we valued education with her miseducated, uneducated ass. No high school diploma, but this woman made it out of poverty, and we was walking on marble flows, nigga, ordering our Christmas gifts out the Nemo Marcus catalog in 81. How? And she a teenage mother. Mama on dope, granddaddy abandoned her. How? No excuses, huh? Come on, my nigga. Couldn't read. How the f to learn how to read? Mm. And you niggas got all the excuses in the world. Have you ever seen a nigga hung from a tree? Nah, what excuse you got, my nigga? How they go miseducate us with the kind of people we had? Our mothers them became whores. Our daddies them became weak niggas who didn't value education. We come from a home life who mama liked playing in a pussy, watching days of our lives, whooping ass and didn't give a damn if you learned how to read. White boy didn't have nothing to do with that. Your mama's determination, the white boy ain't got nothing to do with that. My mama had a determination to make it out as a teenage mother. And she made sure we valued education. So when the white boy said we done something at school, my mama went up there and listened to what them white folks said we did. And knowing her baby, she said, yeah, you done that. Them people ain't lying on you. Some mama went up there and said, you lying on my, and know that motherfucker done that. When I ran from the police and my cousin got caught, my mama went down to that boy's home and said, where Charles and that? I know he was with you. I know he was with you. My mama didn't cover for me. When it was time for them white folks to release me, my mama said, no, hell no, that boy come home now, he gonna be back in trouble. Keep him some more. God damn, mama, I can come home. Keep him some more, I stayed three more years, nigga. Honorable. We used to be honorable people, nigga, that had a value system. Now we a bunch of weak, victim-minded people that blame this white man for everything and we get free education. Our ancestor couldn't go read, nigga. We know how to read. How we so goddamn dumb and miseducated now? And them people couldn't read. Man, the white man ain't got nothing to do with your mom and dad and breaking up. Your daddy being that low down, cheap motherfucker, fuck your mama, sister, and her best friend in the project, and they fall. White boy ain't got nothing to do with that. When your mom and daddy met that night at that club, and they started. White boy ain't got nothing to do with the conditions your mom and daddy met under. And what your daddy decided to do after he had a baby. The white man didn't push no button for that. What you learned in school ain't got nothing to do with the white man. Your desire to learn and the things you like to read about ain't got nothing to do with no white man. You like sports. You like it. You like fighting. You don't like writing papers. You don't like doing book essays. You didn't join a book club. You joined the game. How the white man got something to do with that?
Now we heard you make um, some 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 comments in a recent Say Cheese interview about uh, being glad that Lil J went back to jail. You know yeah. that's one of my our most popular artists here in Chicago. Uh, what makes you so glad for a young black man to be behind bars? Oh, uh, because in, in modern day time, prison and, and jail uh, is is one of the greatest uh, tools that God uses, I believe, for preservation of the black man. Uh, if the black man is allowed, I'm not going to say the black man, I'm going to say the black male. If the black male is allowed to remain free his whole entire life and never go to jail, he'll self-instruct. He'll, he'll get himself a life sentence. He'll get himself the death penalty or he'll get himself killed. When you look at everything around Lil J, it's died. For him to come back home seven years later and to pick up where he left off, fuck this, fuck that, on Tuka, on this, come on, brother, them people done grew past that. It's best you go back to jail so God can preserve you and you have an opportunity to grow. If God don't allow us to go to jail, homie, where do our preservation come from? We don't listen to our mothers, we don't listen to our father, we don't listen to the big homies, we crash out. So if you go to jail, most niggas come back, assalamu alaikum, beard long, hey man, black power, woo woo, they done read the first for they laws of power, and they got another six years of their life where their mother, their children, their cousins, their brothers can have access to them. But if you leave them out here in the free world, they go die, they go self-destruct by their own choices and their decisions. So man, sometimes my mother's prayers ends us up in prison so she can sleep at night and she can set a time to come see us. We get education, we get to go see the doctor, we get our wisdom tooth pulled, we get the abscess tooth and our fix, tooth fixed, we get, we get the STD cleared, uh, we know if we got AIDS, we find out we got high blood pressure. Nigga, that's one of the best places for boys like him to go so they can grow up to be a man. As bad as it sounds, my nigga, goddamn. As bad as it sounds, I hate to agree. And I hate that I hate to agree, right? Because, you know, at this point, uh, with so much controversy behind your name, it's like, uh, you know, agreeing with you is almost like voting a for death Trump. A death sentence. Yeah, like a you death sentence. I'm and I'm saying, listen, homie, the character. Homie, look at the man. Homie, I'm telling y'all, I'm a father. A nigga who, I'm a day one daddy. I've never been absent in my children's life. I've never been to jail on my kids. I don't beat women, nigga, I ain't known. I've been working in the community for over 12 years. Nigga, I ain't known as a whole monger. I ain't known for the nigga that's the bitches like the little league football coaches. Oh, uh, nigga, I ain't the nigga, I ain't the non-profit nigga who everybody in my city say, oh, he just doing that for the money. I ain't like the preachers. Nigga, I got an honorable reputation in my city. So I'm saying, nigga, I can come on the internet and pretend to be whatever. I can say whatever because this is not me. Just like everybody else who's coming on her trying to be something that they really not, but they saying they are. I'm saying, nah, homie, this ain't me. I'm really a bullshit nigga. I'm on her bullshit, but this is what I do in real life. So if a nigga can't get past my words, uh, if my actions don't speak louder than my words, nigga, fuck y'all. Because actions speak louder than words. Okay, now let's pause there, right? Because I've heard you say actions speak louder than words in several other interviews, right? And when I listen to you say that, I say to myself, I hope he doesn't think that the words he say are taken lightly just because actions speak louder than words. Yeah. So are you saying that like words just mean whatever they yeah, don't they mean do. anything? Yeah. This, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never. You coming like that? That's a true statement. Hell no. Nah. Nigga, you lying to me. If somebody Hell listen, nah. if somebody say nigga, nigga, if your, I step to your face and tell you fuck your dead homie in your face, you gonna tell me all oh, those are nothing but words? Yeah, I'm gonna tell nah, you. Listen, hell no. Nah. Those hey, are fighting words. I'm those are shooting hey, listen, words. I'm going to tell you, you a goddamn lie. What I'm going to fight you for and I got to go home to my kids? What I'm going to fight you for, nigga, and I make damn near $10,000 a week and that can stop. What I'm going to fight you? My homies is dead. Your words don't hurt me. Fuck your mama. Nigga, fuck her. You
you don't know now, nigga. Matter of fact, I ain't even got no dead homies, nigga. I'm 45 years old. I ain't got no dead homies. How that's going to hurt me? I'm a grown goddamn man. Don't know words affect me. Boy, words affect your mama, son. Words don't affect no man. Words affect boys and women, nigga. I'm a goddamn man who a woman listen to when I talk. Fuck words go move me for, man. When did niggas start listening to words? Because a man say, you fuck what that nigga say. Watch his action. Because a two-pound lips will say anything, nigga. Two-pound funky lips will fix them motherfuckers to say anything. Watch him. Don't pay attention to nothing no nigga say what daddy and granddaddy and them say. Mama and them affected by words. But when you're raised by your mama, boy, you'll punch a nigga in the mouth and say, fuck your mama. Mama say, baby, he don't know me. Mama didn't even start saying that. Mama, he was talking about you. Baby, he don't know me. Mama even said that. So when did boys and men start paying attention to what a nigga say? When? Fuck your dead homies. What? Fuck them, nigga. Now I heard you say there's no consequence to speaking on the dead because the dead is dead. Now tell me how does that sound, right? There's no consequences of speaking on the dead? You don't what? think there's no consequences behind that? It's not at all. Show me where in history where somebody done died for those consequences for the dead. For speaking on the dead? Yeah. <laughs> Dirk ain't died yet. King Von didn't die for saying fuck Tuka. King Von, King Von did not die for saying fuck Tuka. Uh, white folks speak on the dead all the time. You believe in karma? Nah. Oh, you don't? No, I don't believe okay. in karma. That's because you eat pork. No, 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 no. Because if, if karma was real, when do white people get theirs for slavery? Ooh. If karma was real, when do white people get theirs for slavery? You're a bad fuck for that one. I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to give you that one. When do the Mexican cartel get theirs for chopping heads off and killing babies? When do the Crips and Bloods get theirs? When do dirt get heels? Was that karma for King Von? When do the GDs and BDs get theirs? When do the Latin Kings get theirs? When do America get his? For what they did in Afghanistan? When? For Hiroshima? When? When do, if karma is real, no, get back there and got no date. If karma is real and you want to say that, why haven't white folks got they karma, my nigga? Why do we just got to get it? You only got karma for me. You ain't got karma for your governor. You only say karma gonna come to me for what I done said and I ain't never hurt nobody, my nigga. I ain't never killed nobody. King Von got away with killing four people. When was his karma coming? Do, okay, when do good karma come then? When do good karma come to black people for not ever hurting nobody white? If karma is real. Why karma just bad then, poor-minded black people? Y'all can't answer them questions, homie. Some tough questions. Because y'all are because y'all are operating from an emotional feeling standpoint mm. behind something that you idolize. Mm. And when you idolize something, you detach yourself from God. Mm. I don't idolize nothing and I don't worship nothing mm. but God, nigga. You preaching now. You say the truth don't care about feelings. No, nah, neither does God neither. He cared more about your salvation. What's the saying say? Uh, it's easier to build up children than it is to repair broken, broken men. men. Yeah, I was a, uh, I got repaired as a child. Frederick Douglass. I got repaired as a child. I went into a boy's home at 14 years old. I spent seven years uh, in some of the most intense group therapy sessions. Uh, we was loved, we was nurtured. Uh, I got to meet my victim's family. 
Uh, I got to know what it feel like to be forgiven for, for being a part of taking somebody's life. Uh, I got to know God, homie, without my mother dying. Uh, I got to know God without being sentenced 20 years in prison. Uh, I, I, I got to know God on my own because I, I wanted to be, uh, I didn't want to hurt people. And, and I didn't want to have to have something so tragic in my life happen where I have to find God. I want to do it on my own when life was just okay and I can go wrong or right. Uh, I wasn't forced to do right, homie. Most niggas is forced to do right. They ain't got no more chances in life where if they fuck up, nah, homie, I wasn't forced to do right. Nigga, I chose to become right. Nobody died. My mother's still alive. I ain't buried a bunch of dead homies. I ain't been shot. I ain't been victimized. Nigga, I've been, my life been good. Nigga, I wasn't forced to be right. I really want to be right. So let's take a, let, let's, I just want to go back to uh, the 1991, right? Yeah. Uh, that was a prominent year of your life, correct? Yeah. That was, that, that was the year you got arrested? September 18, 1991. Okay, cool. So I was born in 91, right? Yeah. And so f from, from there, the next seven years, you spent, you spent where? Uh, in the Texas Youth Commission. Uh, I, I was one of the first children in, in the state of Texas who, who failed in a generation of children who, who began to be sentenced un, un, under this juvenile, juvenile law that was called the Texas Juvenile Determined Sentencing Law, where a kid can be sentenced up to 40 years for committing a violent crime in the state of Texas. Okay. Uh, I, I received a 12-year sentence on the capital murder charge. Okay. Uh, me and three of my friends stole, stole some jackets, some starter jackets out of, out of, a, out of Foot Locker. Mm -hmm. And in the process of us trying to get away, uh, my 16-year-old friend shot and killed this white man. Mm -hmm. uh, my my co-defendant was, was tried as adults. I was too young to be tried as an adult. Uh, my mother was, was very financially well off, so I, I had one of the best lawyers in the city, a guy by the name of Carl Mallory. Uh, we had a governor at the time by the name of Ann Richards mm -hmm. who, who, who had been battling alcohol and, and, and drug addiction. And so she was recover, recovering the alcoholic and drug addict. And so a lot of our programs at the time was, was focused strictly on uh, re-socialization and rehabilitation. So I, I grew up in a system that, that was like growing up in a perfect home. Uh, we was in a maximum security facility uh, and every kid in there was in there for uh, a, a violent crime. So capital murder, murder, attempted capital murder, attempted murder, uh, arson, kidnapping, uh, 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 rape, and sexual assault. So everybody had either two, from minimum two up to 40 years. And the ages was from, uh, at that time, it was from 12 to 21. Uh, I grew up in a, in a, in a, like a gladiator school, huh? Okay. Oh uh, yeah, we it, it was rocking and rolling, and then it was at the beginning of the gang culture. So it was it was, it was it, the gang culture was uh, uh, emerging, uh, and eventually became what it was. But the programs, the culture that they had created was created by uh, three psychiatrists and, and one psychologist. It was called a positive peer culture. And so if you look this up, it's it's a curriculum in, in a program. Uh, that was world renowned. Uh, I spent seven years, homie, uh, in, a, in an experiment. The world hadn't never saw children who had killed before. Uh, so yeah, it, it, they, they, were, they brainwashed us, right? Uh, so what, what they were really doing, uh, I mean, they were creating some masterminds. Uh, what y'all see today in me is what they created. Uh, we had to do stuff what they call like a life story, where you would have to uh, fill out paperwork uh, and, and answer questions as far back as your earliest memory in life. And, and from your earliest memory all up until the point where you committed this crime, uh, it's, some, it's some shit in, in between there uh, that psychiatrists and psychologists uh, uh, break down and, and, and show you uh, different cycles that you go through. Uh, the, the, the thinking errors, the, the, the emotional state, the psychological state. So uh, by nature, uh, what they were defining us to become is, is our own psychiatrist. Uh, being able to identify different stages and emotional stages that you go through, psychological, 
uh, stages that you go through uh, before you commit a crime, uh, different feelings that you feel, different thoughts. Uh, you're talking about seven years. Uh, to, to lock up an adult, it was probably about $20,000 a year to lock up an adult prisoner. But to lock a kid up, you're spending $100,000 or more per child. Uh, our, our state juvenile system, uh, they spent a lot of money on, on creating what I became. Uh, my last two years, uh, I spent traveling around the state of Texas speaking at, at some of the most prestigious colleges, uh, Texas A&M, University of Texas, uh, Prairie View A&M. Uh, they created this. Uh, I was never supposed to become what I became for black people. Uh, I was supposed to go get a job somewhere uh, and be something totally different. Can you tell us how you became such a uh Internet sensation at this point. Um, I remember catching you on Say Cheese uh, about, it was uh, early 2021 or late 2020, somewhere around there. And um, since then, you know, obviously, you, any, any, any channel you sit on, any platform you sit on, you blow it up. Yeah, I, I, learned, the, uh, I learned how to master the algorithm. Uh, I, I learned how to go viral every day. It's all about packaging and, and presentation, or uh, shock and awe. Uh, you, you, you. College ain't for everybody. But man, there's some shit you can learn in college, homie. Uh, you can use to advance you in just day, in just day to day life, right? Uh, in speech class, I, I learned the power of, of shock and awe. Getting before people, and if you're giving a speech, I mean, your first two to three minutes, something has to be shocking in there, right? So I've literally done trainings uh, uh, several years back to back for the United States Department of Homeland Security uh, Human Trafficking Division. Uh, and I done pimped before, right? And, and, and I teach these government officials that uh, uh, our hoes ain't being forced into prostitution. That's my standpoint, right? But I'm speaking against human trafficking. In order to get their attention, uh, one of the things that I say is, how many of y'all know that 95% of men alive and dead in America have slept with a whore or a prostitute because America has a secret love affair with whores? This is government officials sitting up. They, they arrest this shit. But I know and they know they all done bought some pussy before. Shock and awe with the truth. <coughs> if I was lying, my shock and awe wouldn't go viral. If I was telling one motherfucking lie, homie, wouldn't nobody be care what the fuck I said. But I ain't lying. And the truth hurts. That's why people want to hurt me. Well, you got a point there. So. It's easy to dismiss a lie. You mean no lying ass nigga? Don't nobody listen to no lying ass nigga. Don't nobody listen to shit a lying ass nigga got to say. He's dismissed. He's discredited. I haven't been discredited yet. That's why every what I say is so effective. You know, one of our most famous uh, artists here in Chicago is Lil Durk. You know, a lot of Chicago youth look up to Lil Durk. Yeah. Um, and he's been running a rap game for the past 10 years. Um, yeah, I just heard about him in the last two. Okay. And somebody got mad at him, homie, when I told, I said Lil Durk bigger than Tupac. His, his influence is greater than what Pox was. Uh, even though Pox had a world influence, uh, when you're talking American culture, uh, yeah, and, uh, Farrakhan, uh, Dr. King, uh, now nah, ain't nobody bigger than Dirk. Uh, Vaughn is in Dirk's shadows. Uh, Vaughn is what everybody desire to be when they want to be evil. I don't know what Dirk is. I just started listening to his lyrics over like the last little six, six to nine months. And the little nigga can rap. Yeah, the little nigga can rap. The little nigga can rap his ass out. And I want to like him. Yeah, yeah, I want to like the little motherfucker. Uh, yeah, I really want to like the little motherfucker. But I don't know enough about him to like him. 
so I don't like him. Uh, I don't like what he represent. I don't like his image. Uh, but I don't know the kid not to like him. So I try not to develop no personal feelings for him. Uh, I'm not emotionally tied to these rappers. Uh, I'm emotionally invested into the culture of our people. I don't have nothing against none of them niggas. I like rap music. I don't like the personification of rappers. Because the rappers are mimicking the street niggas. And the kids are mimicking the rappers. Which ultimately got them mimicking the street niggas. And ain't none of these rappers really no real street niggas. Street niggas die like Vaughn. I go to jail, like Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover. Rest of us playing till we can play our way out of these dangerous situations. So what is the overall message that you um, plan to get across to the youth, right? See, cause, um, you know. Uh, Hip hop tricking us. I was tricked like they tricking y'all. I was tricked with the Crippin' Blood shit, homie. Uh, I went against my mother for it. Before I was ever introduced to Crips and Bloods, homie, I did everything my mother said do. Nigga, when I finally joined that gang, I wrote my mama a letter. Crossing out the bees. I got a gang now, mama. I don't want your guard no more. I got the Crip guard. She told me, yeah, tell them niggas send you some soap. Yeah, tell them niggas send you some soap. <laughs> uh, I ain't never stood up to my mama to the end. I rejected her God, my nigga, only to come back to say mama was right and serve the God that she served. Uh, they tricked me, my nigga. My uncle, the rappers, all the niggas around me, homie, that propagated this bullshit to me. I was willing to die and throw my life away for this shit. And when you grow up and you know better, I promise you, you do better. And when you become a man, all men hate gangs. All men think gang members are cowards. Because no man joins a gang, only boys. So, yeah. so. so this is your first time in Chicago. You said it's your last. Nah, uh, after fucking with y'all, nigga, uh, they go out to kill all of us now. Yeah, y'all go out to die with me. I'm coming back. Man, well, look, yeah, yeah, I'm coming back. back. I'm so, fucking with y'all you know, now. Uh, what we like to do here at DJ UTV is uh, what we call break the barriers, right? Yeah. Um, cross those boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. because um, there's so many that's afraid to do it, you know. And um, that's what we took a good liking into you at, you know. You, you, you say what those are afraid to say, you know what I mean? And um, like you said, when it's spoken with truth, you can't do nothing but respect it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If it was lies, we wouldn't even be paying you no mind. Uh, uh, lies don't hurt. Exactly. Your lies don't hurt. Exactly. Let, 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 let me just say this, homie. Uh, this this going to be an extra bonus. Uh, this, this, this is out of my heart. Let's do a the live stream yard. When I get back situated uh, sometime next week, let's do a live stream yard. Sure. And, and, and then I'll make myself available to the people in Chicago on your platform. For sure. Yeah, because you know they're going to have hella comments, hella questions. Uh, well, yeah, I, 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 I they going to yeah. say, damn, DJ, uh, you, you had Charles and White in there, you ain't get on his ass? Yeah, well, you know, uh, this, this could be against my, you know, my management decision, but I, I, I want to do this for the people of Chicago. I, I think so. I owe that to them. Uh, I got their attention. Uh, not many people can get Chicago's attention. That's a fact. Yeah, so, uh, That's a fact. Uh, yeah, I got their attention, homie. So, uh, yeah, I think we can do something positive. Oh, well, you know, Chicago a rough city, you know what I mean? Uh, but, but, but the city is rough. Uh, I, I refuse to believe that, that the, the heart of the people is rough. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah, you got to be rough because of the conditions. Uh, but my analytics say y'all support me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My analytical data say <laughs> Chicago support me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, fuck what they talking about on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
we family over here, you know. So, you yeah. know, once I let folk know you good, you know, once I let them know you good, you know, they're going to be all right. Uh, you know, and, all and, right. And, and, and quietness, you know, it don't mean nothing to nobody but to the old. Uh, but, man, I've I, I, I petitioned our government on, on, on behalf of Larry Hoover. Those that know, know. No, homie, I've I, 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 I petitioned our government on, on behalf of not just his freedom, but just of uh, his inhumane condition, just to be in general population. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. I, got, I, I got a history with Chicago. Uh, I ain't gonna say too much on camera, but man, sure. they know. Mm -hmm. Those out here, they know. Uh, sure. Nigga, I done sent money up here and everything, nigga. I done treated the Chicago nigga like I did the L.A. niggas. For sure. So, yeah, now nah, salute to Chicago. Uh, uh, I got a heart for Tuka's mother. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I understood she was just a, a mother homie trying to get her son out of, a, a, out of something, and even he had to fight where he went. Even a nigga that, that represented him and loved him, when he first got there, he had to fight him. Uh, when you understand that this kid got suspended from school and one of his last phone calls was to his mother, hey mama, I got suspended, I'm on my way home, I got suspended from school, and two minutes later he dead. Well, what, what kid, I'm not the kind of kid if I get suspended I'm gonna call my mama. Nigga, I'm hitting the streets. I ain't finna call mama and let her know because she gonna tell me come straight home. He checking in after getting suspended. That's a kid, homie. Ain't no gangster nigga. Gangster nigga don't let mama know nothing. He gonna be gangster out in the streets and mama catch me later. So when I understood who Tuka was and he just wasn't a name, uh, how could I be silent about what going on in Chicago as a father, as a black man in America? Nigga, we all on this, we all in America. I don't give a fuck, nigga. I got the right to speak on whatever in America. I got the right to speak on whatever in America, nigga. And any nigga think I'm wrong for it, nigga, be willing to die, kill, and go to jail like me. Because you're definitely putting niggas in jail. Let's not and forget. I'm willing, and, I'm, and I'm in Chicago willing to die. Don't forget that either, nigga. I'm in Chicago willing to die. I ain't just putting niggas in jail. And if you bother me, nigga, I'm willing to kill to stay alive, to go home to my family. So don't forget that either. I'll put you in jail too, nigga. Because I don't want to kill you. Your mama can sleep at night in jail, nigga. She gonna lose sleep with you in that graveyard. I'd much rather put a black man in jail than kill him. That's how much I love black people. Well, well, before we wrap it up, man, don't put Boosie in jail. No, nah, no, nah, I fuck with Boosie. Don't nah, put nah, I fuck Boosie, with Boosie in jail. <laughs> But there you have it, man. Charleston White, man. Appreciate it. Say, man, man give, uh, give, with, give, give with Jazzy, man, so uh, we can lock in the stream yard day. So, yeah, we wanna, I want to, so whenever you drop this, let's do the stream yard right after so we can boom, boom, boom. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's just a freebie on me. I appreciate that's it. That's just man. a freebie on me, my nigga. DJ UTV, shout out to Royalty Productions. Gang. DJ, you go crazy.